In this step, we're going to step up the complexity of UV mapping a little bit, and we're going to concentrate primarily on two pieces of the table, that piece there and that piece there. And this time we're going to do the UV mapping first, and then we'll add the material at the end and make any changes if we need to, although we shouldn't need to. So let's begin by mapping out one of these planks. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, but we only need one. So select one, and then we're going to hide everything else. So we'll go to display, hide, hide unselected objects. So we've just kind of given ourselves this to work on. What we're going to do first of all is map the longer edges. And that's because these are the ones that we'll see the most of. The first thing we'll do is just pop this into face mode. And we're going to select the top face. And then we'll swing around to the bottom, hold shift and select the bottom face. So we've got top and bottom selected. If you can cast your mind back far enough, we also did a bevel on these. And we want to have these part of the first part of our projection. So I'm going to hold shift and full stop, which is greater than. And that will select the beveled edges around the top and the bottom. And that's going to give us what we need for our first projection. So what we're going to do for this now is go to UV. In fact, whilst we're doing some more complex UV mapping, what I'm going to suggest is that we move into the UV mapping workspace. So let's just go to the drop down here. We've been in modeling all this time. Let's now go to UV editing. So what this does is it gives us our perspective view over here. We've got our UV editor here and the UV toolkit. So everything that we need kind of at a glance, which is nice. So let's start by getting our first faces UV map. So we're going to go to UV. We're going to choose planar and we need to make sure that we're doing the Y axis and that keep the image width and height ratio is turned on. And then we'll click on project. That will give us our two faces done. What I'll then do is just rotate those around. So let's go into transform and we'll rotate them 90 degrees it doesn't matter which way around we do them and I'm just going to move these off to the side for now perfect now what we need to do is select the side pieces so that side there and that side there and these are going to be seen the least so they're not as important but I still want to get them right if I can so we're going to map these on the z-axis so let's go to UV planar and change the project from to Z and project and we're just going to rotate these 90 degrees as well lovely and we'll move those off to the side so I'm just pressing W to switch to my move tool and that just leaves a few pieces so we need the end piece and the two pieces to the side of the end there and then we'll just switch around and do the same here so the end piece so I'm holding shift to get all of them that piece there and that piece there keep in mind that whilst we're in face mode we also could have just done this to select them all as well there you go and these ones we're going to project on the x-axis so let's go to UV planar and X project this gives us all of our pieces now what I want to do is try and line these up before I can do that I'm just going to go into UV shell mode select them turn my move tool on and i'm just going to move them like this and you can see that we've got pieces on top of other pieces that's fine and normal that should have happened so now we should be looking at one two three four five six uv shells now that we've not got them overlapped the next problem that we have to solve is that half of these are facing the wrong way and we can check that by using this tool here when i click that you'll notice that some are blue and some are red. Red is telling us that the UV is facing the wrong way, so it's flipped over. And we need to flip it back. In order to do that, just click on one of your shells, and in the transform section of your UV toolkit, just click on flip, and that will flip it around and it'll go blue. At this stage, you could be done. It would be a bad idea to finish here though, because your texel density is going to be inconsistent. These end pieces are much bigger than they should be. They should only be about as wide as that. Before we can make the change though, I just want to check something because we don't want this to go wrong. So I'm going to press Control and A a couple of times and that will open my channel box and I can see that I've got some transforms on this shape and I want to get rid of those before I attempt the layout otherwise I'll get results I don't really want. So let's just do modify freeze transformations. There you go. You can see they're all gone. I can close my channel box for now and then into shell mode here 
get my UV toolkit back. And now if I click on layout, which is just down at the bottom, under arrange and layout, everything goes the right size and shape in relation to one another. I'm now gonna suggest just one more change and it's called stitching. If you think of these as like fabric, to get the wood grain on these to look consistent as it wraps around, what I'm gonna do is just go into edge mode. And if you see as I'm mousing around with my edges, often two edges, you can see I've got two red edges there, two edges there. This is my telling us that these can be stitched together. So what I'll do is I'll start here and just click on that edge there. And then I'm gonna go into cut and sew, and then I'm just gonna click on stitch together. And you can see that that now has created one shell out of those. I'm gonna go onto here as well and we'll just stitch that together. And then I'm gonna go up at the top there and stitch together and that's added that. I'll do the same here on the bottom, stitch together. And one final piece to add on, click on there and stitch together. And what I've done now is created one UV shell out of all those pieces, which means the wood grain is gonna wrap around and make sense in most places. There will be some seams where it can't be joined up, but I'll get fewer seams because I've done it this way. So I'll just do one last layout to make sure that it fits in this square. And that is perfectly UV'd. One last thing to check. I'm just gonna turn on this here, which is the checker map. I'm gonna go into object mode. And if I can see that everything on here is squares, and not rectangles, that means that I've got a good UV map. And that to me looks like a good UV map, that looks like all squares. So I'll turn that checker map off. There's one other thing you could do, if I just click on here, if you see any red when you turn this tool on, that means you've got some UV distortion. You can see there's no red in there for me, it's quite happy with it. So I'll turn that off. Okay, so that's our first piece UV mapped. I'm very, very happy with that. If yours looks like that, you should be happy too. We'll just need to do the other piece of the table as well. So let's go to display, show, and we'll just show last hidden. And now we're going to select on this piece. You can see this does not look as it should. Then we'll just hide everything else. Display, hide, unselected objects. Okay. The easiest place to start with this one, let's go into face mode and we'll click on this bottom edge here and then I'm gonna hold shift and double click up at the top and that will select all of this front edge. Then I'll swing around and do the same on the back, holding shift still, click on the bottom, up to the top, double click. So now I've got front and back selected. We also have this bevel here, which I would like to be a part of this selection. So I'll do the shift and full stop trick to get that selected. There we go. And now what I would like to do is get a planar projection and I can see I'm looking through the x-axis. So let's do that. Planar, x-axis, project. And that gives me that UV there. So I'll move that off to the side. And now I've just got these edges to work with. Now luckily, I know that I'm not gonna be able to see the top or the bottom. So I don't need to worry too much about those. What I'll do instead is click on this bottom edge here and double click on the top edge there. Then I'll do the same shift click there and double click there. So you can see that I've got the two sides there selected. And I'm gonna to choose to just do a planar projection on the Z axis for these. So let's do planar, Z, project. That gives me two more pieces that I can move off to the side. And then I'm just gonna go into face mode here, select these two, and I'll just do these on the Y axis so that they're done. It doesn't really matter because I won't be able to see them, but I might as well do them. Okay, my next job is to make sure that I don't have pieces overlapping anymore. So we'll go into shell mode, I'll select them one shell at a time and make sure that they're not overlapping. There we go, that gives me now six pieces. Then I'll click up here to see which ones are the wrong way around and I'll flip them. Flip, flip, and flip. And now to show you something, you can see now where the distortion is on these. Some of the distortion is not too bad and makes sense like on these sides, because I know that they're all right. But where I don't like the distortion as much is here. Not a big fan of that at all. So for these two shells, 
I'm going to select them. Let's just minimize some of these sections a bit. I'm going to go into Unfold and click on Optimize. Here's the result that gives me. So now I'll just click on them one at a time and click on Straighten UVs. And that will get them nicely lined up again. And now this checkerboard pattern is going to be really important to me. Because I can see that on here, these are rectangles. So I'm going to select both the shells so that I get them symmetrical. Change to my scale tool. And then I'm going to just scale them up. And I'm watching here to make sure that these become mostly squares. And I won't get it exactly right, but I'll get it close. So I can see now that as I look at this, most of that is now squares. It's certainly much closer than it was. So everything else is squares. I'm happy with that. So we need to get these to be laid out to get the textile density consistent. So I'm now going to go into shell mode. I need to check that I've got no transforms on this. So let's get our outliner open. That doesn't really give anything away. So I'm not going to risk it. I'll just pop it into object mode. I'm going to do free transformations and edit delete by type history. Now that I've done that, I can see more distortion here. So let's just try and optimize this again. See if it goes any better. It has gone better. So yeah, that optimization has worked much better now. So let's just now straighten our UVs and let's lay it all out into shell mode, select all of the shells, arrange and layout and click on layout. I'm happy with that. The wood grain is going to open now, so that should work out okay. So let's go back into object mode. I'm just going to turn off the checkerboard pattern. We're going to go to bring everything else back. Display. Show last hidden. And now with these two pieces selected, I'm going to do one more layout to get the texel density to be consistent. So let's just do layout. So these will now, if I turn on the checker pattern, the squares should be the same size. They absolutely are. So that means that the wood grain will look like it all came from the same type of wood. Okay, we can turn the checker pattern off. So our UV mapping of those two objects is complete and it's bloody good, let me tell you. That is some good UV mapping right there. So let's build our material and add it. We'll do that nice and quickly. So into, we'll just go back into our modeling workspace. And now let's go into our hypershade, clear the graph, and we will make ourselves a new AI standard surface. Give it a name. M underscore table will do for me. I'm going to use the clay preset, and then we'll load in the color. So you can see I've got a table texture already named, so we'll click on open for that. And then what we'll do is go to add the roughness. So let's go to file click on the type of file we want and it's going to be table roughness oh nice and finally let's add our beautiful normal map into geometry click on the checker button for bump mapping choose a file make sure we're on tangent space normals click on the little arrow next to bump value click on the folder and let's bring in our table normal map yeah Okay, we're going to add that to that piece there and that piece there, and let's have a closer look at it. Okay, I think the table grain might be showing up as too big. I'm going to check it in Arnold just to make sure that it looks too big. Actually, I take it back. That to me looks okay, so I'm not going to make any more changes to those UV maps. I think that will work perfectly. Right then, that's going to do it for this step. It was a bit of a long one, but you are now pretty good at UV mapping. I promise you that. In the next step, rather than UV map all the other planks and this piece over here, what we're going to do instead is we're going to duplicate the UV maps from the pieces we've already done onto these new pieces, which can be a really good time saver. So I will see you in the next step for some UV map duplication. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.